In this example file that I put together, I wanted to show off a cool little workflow that um, I've used quite a bit with Houdini and Lops um, in terms of trying things out, delivering different formats for projects, uh, et cetera. And it's really nice because you can do a lot of stuff with some automation here in Tops. Um, and it makes working in Lops really, really nice for doing things like experimenting with layouts and lighting setups and render settings and stuff like that. So we have two basic scenes set up here. We have a scene like this, which is camera with 16 by nine ratio. If I give it a little render, it's a very, very basic scene here. We've got a turntable. The turntable is animated here on the mech. So we're just animating our rotation value there. And then we have a clay render here. So I'm gonna change back to our one by one camera. We've also changed the aspect ratio. So now if we render this out, essentially all we've done is make a new material, which we're calling clay. And we've chosen a different uh, dome light here. So we're changing the texture. This is Skylight Garage. And the other one here is the Chiara Noon one. We've changed our camera and we've also assigned that clay material to all the objects in our scene here. So two very, very different looking renders, but you can see how this is something that you might want to do in production where you're doing asset turntables and stuff like that. And you want to show a clay render versus a fully realized textured render, etc. So let's go and take a look at the top net that we have set up for this. So it's fairly simple and it does two interesting things. We'll break it down. There's render number one happening here, and then we're waiting for everything to finish. And then we go into render number two here. So what we first want to do is we want to grab our lop path for our textured one and that is right here. You can see we have textured out here. We're calling that clay out. So we're grabbing that and we are rendering a USD turntable here. So you can see our output file. We're writing to a temp folder and this is turntable textured.usd. So right now I have a frame range of just one to two, but we can change that to 24, 48, whatever it is. I think it's a 48 frame. Yeah, it's a 48 frame loop. So we'll put that on 48. I've got that channel reference down here and I'll change the same thing over here. So essentially that writes out a USD file. And if your USD has been authored correctly, you shouldn't need to change anything in here. If it's not correctly set up, you might choose to flatten the entire stage. Uh, it's kind of up to you. We've been through this in previous lessons, so I'm not going to go through that again. And then what the USD render here does is it's looking for the upstream output file, which is coming from here. And I'm going to write the files in here. Uh, cache mode I set to write files because um, I have some previous renders in here and I want to make sure that I'm overwriting everything instead of skipping anything that's previously been written. I shouldn't have to change much because most things are set up correctly inside that ROP uh, or inside the render settings. And I'm going to render all the frames in one batch here because I'm doing it on one machine locally. So I don't really get any benefit by um, distributing this that much. Going into my husk options, I've had, I have explained this before. I'm going to use all my processors except one so that I can still use my machine if I needed to. And I don't think I changed anything in here. Uh, this is set to single, but I think that already was set there by default. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm saying wait for the entire thing to finish, and then we can go on and do the next thing here. So it's basically the exact same thing. Uh, one thing to know here for both of them, for the USD renders, is it is looking for specific render setting primitives. Um, 
those will be defined here in your Karma render settings. And if you haven't changed anything here by default, uh, it should pick everything up correctly. If you have changed anything, you're going to want to make sure that the top node is pointing to the correct render settings uh, primitive so that it can find all the information it needs for rendering. So with that ready to go, all you need to do is click to cook the node. We'll save our scene. And you can see what's happening here. We've got one process writing a USD file, and then we've got a bunch of different frames that are going to render. We're going to wait for that. Then we're going to start another USD file and render everything out. So we'll let this go and we'll come back once all the frames are finished and we'll take a look at what we've got. So our render is finished and you can see that in one button push, we've gotten two sets of renders with different render settings, frame size settings, shader assignments, etc. All the cool things that you can do in LOPS and combined with TOPS is a really powerful tool set to be able to use together. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Obviously, it just scratches the surface for what you can do, but it does show some of the power that you can get when you combine some of the best parts of Houdini, LOPS, Laris, USD, and all of these other things together uh, can be really, really amazing.